of trust law, property law, and contract law that a long-term tenant has the right to redeem their position and retain right of use of the property. To such power is this right that even if you have been kicked out of your home, if you redeem your position as a tenant to the rent, you may return to that property and resume right of use. Now, notice I've said tenant. Notice I've said right of use. I've said nothing about principal, and I've said nothing about ownership. But what does a bank lie? And again, this is all comes to the heart of how you can save your home or regain your home because you are showing competence in knowledge, not some magic bullet that someone's going to send you, like that estate letter and other things I've seen, which send people down absolutely the wrong garden path. I cannot teach you competence. You have to read this and know it, and then you are competent. That's why we're doing it this way. But the bank convinces you that unless you pay the entire amount, principal and interest, and even sometimes penalty, you will be kicked out of your home. That is a lie. That is an absolute barefaced lie. More than that, that is an intimidatory um, placement of you under extreme duress. It is extreme fraud, not just fraud. Extreme fraud. Because the fact is, as a long-term tenant, you have a right, a sacred right, to redeem your position and return to using. Why? Because you don't own it. That's why. You don't own it. You're making money for the landlord. And it is a principle that goes right across the board. Now, if that principle was not upheld, I assure you there wouldn't be uh, a state on the planet that uh, would still be in their offices. They would have lost them. Most of the banks would have lost things because it happens all the time. It's just that they choose for the quote-unquote little people to stamp, stamp on them like a mean kid with a magnifying glass and ants. So you have the right to uh, not only um, bring the rent up to, uh, to position, but you also have the right to offer a consideration to the court by nominating your budgetary position, recording with the court records a consideration, and then it's up to the um, uh, bank to refute it. But if you can only afford $50 a week rent for a short period, you have every right under right of redemption to have that recorded with the county uh, recorder's office and actually go and see that consideration is placed. Now, I've heard of lots of fancy tricks that people do in terms of renegotiating or conveying of the lease or conveying of the title. These are all things that are also doable, but they are more complicated. And, and tonight, um, I don't suggest going down that particular route. What I do suggest is that people read exactly what a foreclosure is and know exactly the fraud that has been issued against you and for armed with this knowledge, know that there are many ways you can approach this. But I, there is not a magic letter yet, and I don't know if we will ever issue a magic letter because the temptation is to send a letter without ever establishing competence. Remember, those Cessa KV trusts will not be lifted <clears throat> Even with, a, with an ecclesiastical deed poll, it will not be lifted in most cases until you have passed the test, quote unquote, of fire, which is to show that you are competent to these priests of Baal. And so I can't do that for you. No one can do that for you. I, I know it's unfair. It's terribly unfair. However, you're not being asked to read the entire Encyclopedia Britannica. You're just being asked to be methodical, 
read, discuss, absorb, and take control and take ownership and responsibility rather than rushing to remedies that are thrown to you. So foreclosure there tells you very clearly what happens in a foreclosure. Now let's talk about taxes quickly. And then I'm open for all questions that uh, you may have. So Article 107 on taxes. Well, okay, tax is a form of charge imposed by the executives and administrators of an estate upon beneficiaries for the use of property of the estate by enforcing the landlord-tenant relationship. Okay, different types of taxes, fine. Um, but let's have a look at uh, 1363, 1364 and 1365, okay? Canon 1363. Under the modern inferior Roman legal system, almost all revenue of an estate is now classed as taxes, which is both confusing and misleading. However, from all the varieties of taxes, there exists just three base forms. Rent tax, compensation tax, and duty tax. Canon 1364. Rent tax is a deliberate fraud of misnaming rent charged to a tenant by the landlord being the executors of the deceased estate of the province or nation for the use of some property. And here it is. Both income tax and company tax are forms of rent tax. Okay, 1365. Income tax is a rent tax by the executors of the estate for use of their property in the form of the dead body corporate, also known as a corporation, of the first, and it says here of the Sester KV, but it's the first Sester KV trust formed on the presumption that the beneficiary is dead, abandoned, a minor incompetent. So here again, here again, we find that the Sester KV trusts are at the centre of their power. These hidden trusts that they deny exist once again, are at the centre of their power. So when you remove them, they have no lawful legal basis in which to claim income tax. Now, I will say a qualifying point here, and I say this every time, because it's important. Anyone that is a member of a society has a moral duty to support that society. No question. But, Having a moral duty to support a society does not exonerate a system that treats its own as slaves or treats them as dead or treats them as incompetent or allows certain members who know the fraud to not pay tax and then those that work the hardest to pay the most tax. That is an immoral system that is a system that is corrupt and needs to be challenged. So when people say to you, and you'll see this more and more, because I've seen it before, groups will say they're unlawful, they don't want to pay taxes. No, no one should, should ever be permitted to say and use the argument here of challenging a fundamentally perverse, awful, corrupt, insane system from contributing to society. I believe everyone, um, uh, has a moral duty, and I'm sure most people will, if you ask them, agree that they have a moral duty. In fact, all would probably say they have a moral duty to contribute to their society. But that is totally different to the way the system is running at the moment. Well, again, solving these problems comes from knowledge, comes from competence. Competence is the single most important thing you need to do. And it is also, I have to say, the most frustrating. I wish it wouldn't be this hard, but, the, but it is, unfortunately. So I, I, I just say to you that please read, please exchange questions, please ask questions. Um, there is constantly new information and new ideas coming. Um, we try and help as much as we can. And we will be doing more and more. And you'll see more and more documents and forms coming. But with that, uh, I thank you. Uh, a lot of information again tonight. Some important new information. 
and I would very much like now to answer any and all questions you have. So it's over to you. And um, Terry, how do you want to handle the questions? Can you hear us, Terry? Yes. Hi, hi Frank. Yeah. Uh, right now, um, first question I have seen is uh, what to do if you don't have if you are mortgage free. How is the uh, um, deed poll possibly going to help someone that is mortgage free? Uh, Brian asked back about do you have the real title? So can you address that? Sure. Um, there will there will be people who uh, are free and clear, and then that occurs. What happens is that the property gets conveyed back to the to the county or the state, uh, and then the landlord, of course, is the state. You're the tenant of the state, and it's uh, you know then a 99 year um, uh, lease or whatever it is. Um, I'm a great believer that you don't want to poke a bear in the eye if you don't have to. <clears throat> so if your mortgage is clear and you're in that position, uh, there are other things you can do. Uh, you're probably still paying taxes. Yeah. Um, it, I think what I'd say to people, and this, is, this has been asked a few times, and I gave this as an honest answer. If you are lucky enough to be in the position where in your life you are not under attack presently from the system for taxes, for property, or for something else, and yet you are still interested in how these things work to find yourself on a call like this or listening to this call, then the best thing you can do is, lead, is, sorry, is, is read, learn, and help others and not to create controversy in your life given the system is not coming after you at the present moment. That's the honest answer. Help others who are in trouble. That's what I would do if I was in that situation. Okay? Right. Yep. Very good, Frank. Thank you. Also, the, those that are on the calling lines, if you would press star 8 uh, to put yourself in a queue to ask a question, if you do have questions, then I can unmute you and uh, you can ask the question or questions and we'll go from there. So star 8 on your phone puts you in a queue that allows me to unmute you and keep the line clear and quiet as we're uh, going through questions. All right. Uh, um, guest 23 is asking, what about the past mortgage or loan? I'm not sure. Um, okay. Uh, what about, can you read, read that again for me? What about the? Past mortgage or loan. Anything that was okay. in the past. Um, okay. So past mortgage. Um, could mean one of two things. Could mean that they, it's now free and clear, which we've just answered, uh, or they might be referring to uh, that you have had a foreclosure against you and you've lost the home. Yeah? Well, a couple of things uh, come to mind. Um, if the home has not been sold, and it turns out in many cases this, this is the situation, there is the ability uh, to um, go back and, and seek a right of redemption uh, and effectively uh, reverse what has been done against you based on the fact that this fraud has occurred. Now, <clears throat> the basis of moving forward on that, um, as I say, there's no document that I can give you for that. So you would have to do it on your own based on the knowledge that you acquire in reading what we've discussed tonight but there is no reason that even if a foreclosure has occurred against you, that you could not reclaim the property through right of redemption. Because even if a judge uh, issues a foreclosure against you, it is still an incompetent uh, administrative act because they have not told you the essence of what a foreclosure is. They have not told you that you were a fixed term tenant. They did not give you truly the opportunity of right of redemption. The bank lied to you and demanded that you pay everything or you will lose everything. So I, I hope whoever asked that question, please read those sections and see that it would not 